So it's getting closer to Christmas, isn't it? I know that's true for a number of reasons, and one of them is because earlier this morning in our Sunday school, we were going to do um, something that took a little bit of technology, and and probably everybody's doing their last-minute shopping, and and um, we couldn't get online to do that. So so it must be the Christmas rush time. And uh, today we're going to think about the first Christmas rush, but until then, um, think about what's going on for you. All the stuff you have to do today, tomorrow, and then ultimately Tuesday to, to just be ready. All the uh, cooking, the cleaning, the shopping, and, and things that are there. But I want you to be on guard for something. Do not let the rush of this crowd out the real purpose, meaning of what Christmas is. We all want to do the very best we can and make it as nice and as wonderful for everybody else that we can. Um, but it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, maybe meaningful, personal, special is better. <clears throat> There's a lot of pressure that you're feeling right now. And with all the activities and there's going to be some relationship issues and some expectations that won't be fulfilled. Just gives you a headache thinking about it, right? <laughs> it does me at least. Here's a piece of advice. Do not shop, guys, on December 24th. <laughs> uh, listen to the voice of experience. Years ago, I drove up the Fairlawn, Bath, Montrose, whatever you call, Route 18 up there, and I was looking for a particular thing at a particular store. And, you know, it was pretty crowded, pretty busy up there. So I got off the highway and I turned right into the shopping center because I wasn't real sure where the store was. And I pulled in there and it was just a million people. And I finally went and stopped and parked and I asked someone where this store was. And they said, oh, it's across the highway, across Route 18. Not exaggerating. It took approximately 60 minutes to cross the highway on December 24th in the afternoon trying to do some shopping. Don't do that, ever. <laughs> Never, ever, ever. <laughs> Christmas can be a rush time, and it can be really a hassle, and that's not what we want it to be, and that's not what God's purpose was. We've been looking at some of the first of Christmas, and today is the first Christmas rush, but we started this series looking at the first Christmas gift. The gift of life Jesus can give to you and I. He came born in a manger as a lamb of God, but ultimately was going to go to a cross and be crucified for your sins and mine and raise again, come alive and live forever as a risen savior to give victory over death and to prove his superiority. He purchased that for us. We also looked at that first Christmas greeting which was when the angels approached the shepherds and, and told them of what wonderful, great things uh, that God had done for them. And we looked at the first Christmas carol, which was the angels uh, in response to that, not knowing what else to do except what they always do, and that is to give praise and exaltation to our God. Today we want to read from Luke chapter 2, verses 15 through 20, as we do think about that Christmas rush. It says this, When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. <laughs> So what do you do when the angels leave? <laughs> that divine phenomenon which announced the Savior's birth uniquely impressed these shepherds. They had to do something. They did. They believed the message and they obeyed God. Because they followed the angels' guidance, they found great joy. And they had two responses 
which I think are good ones for us to mimic. First of all, they hurried off. They made haste. Literally means to accelerate, to hasten, or to cut across. They went straight to Bethlehem, and nothing got in their way. They were going to test this message that the angels gave to them, and in testing it, they found out that it was true. Now, these were probably, you know, these are shepherds, probably, um, possibly temple shepherds who were there to raise the sheep that were provided for the temple sacrifices in Jerusalem. And they were to ensure that the lambs used for the Passover sacrifice were without spot or without blemish. These needed to be healthy sheep, unblemished. In that region, it was long known for shepherding. Many hundreds of years before that, a man named David, king of Israel, was once a shepherd there as well. All these shepherds prepared the sheep for worship. But, you know, most likely they themselves were not permitted to even enter the temple because of some of the restrictions due to their contact with blood when they would give birth and help with that with the little lambs, or even their ritual uncleanness. Sometimes they had to handle some of the, the dead carcasses of the, um, of the lost sheep. And that disqualified them from even participating in the very sacrifices that they helped pre so careful to prepare for. They were spiritual outcast. If they were gonna ever find hope, they had to look somewhere outside of that temple. Shepherding is one of the oldest occupations in scripture. They would lead their sheep wherever they needed to, to find food and to find rest. And, and they were often traveling great distances. The sheep were constantly with them. Not exactly an exciting life. There wasn't a whole lot of excitement or joy in shepherding. Many of them, shepherds, lived in poverty, maybe even loneliness. That God announced the birth of his son to the Savior, the Lamb of God, to shepherds is consistent with Jesus' mission to save us from our sins. There was purpose in every aspect of this, just as there's purpose in everything that God does for us. They responded with worship and, and they made haste to go. They also responded by spreading the word. They were the first to receive the message of the birth of the king. Then they were the first to share that message of the birth of the king. Simple shepherds, getting a communication, telling about the Savior. And it says they went and they told people, oh, what a story they could have told. <laughs> they could have talked about how once we were the outcasts, we couldn't even go in and worship. Now we're embraced by God given this great message. They were the first to go and kneel by the manger. And then when all that was done, and we don't know what took place while they were there, they returned to their duties. They left the presence of God, and they went out glorifying and praising God. I imagine they told everybody about the bright light, they probably communicated that message that the angels gave when they said, good news, mega joy. And then the angelic chorus joining them, filling the skies, just amazing scene, breaking into their night routine and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. This is the Lamb of God. The one whose death was going to pray, pay for all the sins, for all men, for all time. That's you and I. Who did these shepherds tell? Who did they see when they were going into Bethlehem and as they were going out of Bethlehem? And these people they told, they told the story to, uh, how did they even know what to think? Um, they had to have been amazed. They had to have been amazed. They heard and they wondered 
at what this could possibly be. Could it be, is this really the Messiah that God had promised Israel for hundreds and hundreds of years? Who are these shepherds? What a strange message they had. Think about Mary. It says she took it all in and she pondered everything. I think maybe she was surprised when they were there in this little stable in an inn with a baby in a manger and all of a sudden a bunch of ragtag shepherds showed up <laughs> and they come in and they want to sing praise and they want to say wonderful things and they start talking about angels and lights and songs and man, it's just way too much to, to comprehend. And when those shepherds left, I wonder what Mary and Joseph talked about that night. Uh, it had to be overwhelming in one sense. It had to be reaffirming in another sense. This is what the angel had told Mary. This is what the angel had told Joseph. Uh, it is all coming about. And boy, did they need that reaffirmation. They needed to be confirmed in the center of God's will because this was very difficult and very unusual. Their lives were never going to be quite the same again. The shepherds' lives were never going to be the same again. After they had heard and seen and experienced, they could never be the same again. They're not the castouts anymore. They're not forgotten. And they went away glorifying and praising God. When you experience and know the grace of God, his grace given to you through his son, Jesus, you'll never be the same. You must go away glorifying and praising this God. I gave you a little tip earlier about do not shop on December 24th. Let me give you another gift tip. The best gifts are when you know the person and you know what they need and you care for them and you love them enough that you want to give them the very, very best that you can give to them. Well, the very best ever Christmas gift happened to be the very first Christmas gift, the one that God gave to us when he gave us his son, Jesus. God knew what we needed. God knew that there was a barrier of sin between us and him. God knew what we needed above anything else, that we needed that one death for all man, for all sin, for all time. And he loved us so much that he provided that need. He loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son so that if anyone would believe and trust in him, they would have not just life, but have eternal, everlasting, forever life. Today, those who listen to God and honor him can know that same joy that the shepherds were told about and can experience that same peace that the angels have said that they desire to see for all mankind. We can respond in the same way as the shepherds did, with a personal encounter and then by sharing the good news of the great joy with other people. That should include some traces of worship. It should include us exalting God for who he is and for what he has done. And when we do that, that's going to help us cut through all the hustle and the bustle of the holidays. It'll help us get through the gifts and the wrapping and everything else. Because the glorious one was wrapped in humanity. The greatest gift of all. You know, that talks about the wideness of God's mercy. How incredible it is that he loved us and he gave it for all to be forgiven of their sins. Jesus came to this planet to rescue and save all of us. And when he did that, it was an open invitation 
for us to come and know him and to worship before him and to go and share who he is. That invitation takes us from the stable all the way through the cross, all the way through the empty tomb and into the gates of heaven. But it's something that each one of us need to experience and know in our own hearts and our lives. His grace, his goodness, his forgiveness. Would you join me in prayer? Father, how we thank you so much this day for that first Christmas gift, the greatest gift ever given of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you that it was your love that sent him to this earth, your love for your creature, the people that you have made with the purpose to know and fellowship with you for all eternity, and that your love saw past our sin, your love saw past all of our failures and shortcomings, and your love purchased us. You loved us and you demonstrated your love to us even while we were still sinners. While we rebelled in our hearts and in our lives against you, you still loved us and bought us. What a great and gracious God you are. And the gift of Jesus, a sacrifice lamb, fulfilled everything that that system set up before that intended to do. It made righteousness available to us. It's Jesus' righteousness that is applied to our account when we believe in him. God, thank you for the gift of eternal life that is only found in Jesus. There is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And God, I pray for each one here today that even as we go, and, and it's going to start right away, the rush and the hustle, but uh, even as we do that, I pray that our hearts would be stayed upon Christ and that we would be mindful above anything else of who he is and what he has done for us. And that that great news and that wonderful joy can be ours, not just this time, but throughout all the year, all the days of our lives. And may we give glory to you in all that we'd say and do. In Christ we pray. Amen.